They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in Farmer's Kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in Farmer's Kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Woods Equipment Company. Has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, your village shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Look what we got. Ah, food. I like food. food. Why, it's food. But you know what? This is food that I went up in the woods and got myself. Good job. You know what? For the last, I don't know how many years, we kind of look at venison different from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's we food. Do. Now, a lot of folks are asking for more wild game recipes. So when they ask us for stuff, you we'll do probably it. just do it. That's right. Because we, like we like our folks out there. We're not, and again, these are not viewers, they are friends. That's right. I mean, we know these people by name, we talk to them on Facebook and YouTube. We have the best friends out there. We do. So when they ask us to cook more wild game, I guess we'll just cook more wild game. You know what? All this good stuff laying out here, my, I'm, I'm, my mouth's starting to water because we I'm haven't hungry. eaten in a while. That's right. And as you know, we do very timely stuff. Right now, we're in this kitchen because the cabin is impossible to get to. That's right. It's I'll like Donner Pass. <laughs> By the time we get to the top of the hill, we'd have to eat each other. That's right. And have to sled back down at night, so it's pretty bad. We're snowed in, literally. We had other plans today. We were actually, we, we actually are going to talk to a very local, popular chef who has restaurants. And, yeah. And she's right around the corner. That'd be fun. We can't get down the driveway right now. So we had to kind of change our plans and go to the freezer. Now, we talked about our puppies. Aww. 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 Tonight is the night. We're going to name their names. So we're going to go on to our Facebook page where we had our contest. And we're going to dig deep. Did they respond? Oh, yeah. Got billions of responses. And we we found some wonderful names in there that we, we didn't did. think of. So we're going to actually name the puppies tonight at the end of the show. Now, look right here. Here's what you're going to see in a little while. Look at the size of these chowder heads. They're eating good. They're monsters. Aren't they precious? Of course, you know, the little boy <laughs> looks just like Maggie. Remember when she mm -hmm. looked like this? She looks almost just yeah. like a little fuzzball. Moses and Maggie, Magnolia, they did well. Yes, they did. There's a love story there. We'll tell that a little bit later. The love story of Aww. Magnolia and Moses. It's almost like ours. Isn't that sweet? It is. Yeah. Without all the hair. That's right. <laughs> okay, we got wonderful things planned for you tonight. Venison, right here. Yum. Now, here's what hurts my feelings. And it's everybody does their own thing, and that's fine. But so many people I know take their deer, and they have it all ground up in the burger, the whole thing. That's crazy. Or hmm. jerky, which is good. Right. But they miss all these cuts, all these steaks, all these roasts. The tenderloin. This is the best. tenderloin. Now, this tenderloin right here is from a young deer mm -hmm. that I killed this year. Now, if you have never seen me shoot a bow, I have to shoot the bow with my teeth. And that's how I actually yeah. shoot a bow and arrow in order to take game. And I've killed hundreds of deer like that. Now, we don't necessarily chase after the great big bucks. Right. We're thinking about food, this food. right here. Now, you've seen me do a wine reduction sauce with some venison we've done in the past. Tonight, we're going to take this beautiful piece of tenderloin. I've cut all the silver seam off of it. And all the connective tissue just have this beautiful piece of meat sitting right here. It's room temperature. I'm going to take prosciutto, and I'm going to wrap that. Mm. Then we're going to make a wine reduction sauce. 
port wine. Now, port wine makes the best sauces. And you say, why would you want to use port wine? It's a sweeter wine, and they age it in wood barrels. Hmm. So it has this intense, wonderful flavor. And as you reduce it down with other things, it increases that flavor. Sounds so good. when you take your shallots and your balsamic vinegar and so on and so forth, Yum. we're going to make a reduction. And we're going to filter that a couple times and then okay. come back and we're going to have... Mm, mm, mm. Mm. You know, I eat potatoes. So I don't like potatoes, right. but you love potatoes. I love potatoes. So tell me what you did with your potatoes without giving too much away. Well, I like to make them awful creamy, so I mm -hmm. have to use whipping cream. I like sour cream, and I put basil Wait, in my... whipping cream and sour cream. Yeah, and a lot and, of... And butter. butter. And so butter. there's no calories? No, no calories. But the secret ingredient is I cut up basil and put that in it, and I did that, and you loved it. Amazing. You cannot believe the flavor that your mashed potatoes have by a simple thing. But first of all, Again, tonight, we're going to name the puppies. I can't wait. <laughs> name the beautiful little chowderhead puppies. Now, you know, Taryn called on the phone. She had some names. I don't know if you like them, but... <laughs> oh, hi, Dylan, Grandpa. I'm Taryn. I want to just say I want to name the puppies Myrie and Mercy. And bye. Call you later. <laughs> she wasn't part of our Facebook post. That's right. She, she won't doesn't too, know. She won't be too... She'll bad. forget by the once, time she Once she's here. playing with them and they yeah. bounce around, she won't pay attention to okay. that. But before we get too far involved here, let's look back on the story, the love story, the beautiful love Aww. story of Moses and Magnolia. It wasn't that long ago, almost two years ago, right. we brought Moses in. Aww, okay? he's so little. Okay, there's a reason we came outside. We told you the stork was coming. Well, the stork is coming. We're looking for Moses. Moses is going to be our guard dog for Mavis, Myrtle, and Milkweed. So, uh oh, here we go right now. Moses has made his entrance. We've been waiting all day for Moses. <laughs> this is Megan. Megan, tell us, tell us first of all where Moses came from. Which farm? Moses is from Fort Harper Farms of Benton, Kentucky, or very far western Kentucky. We say Callaway, but and they raise these dogs just for this purpose. Yes, just for the purpose of herding and staying with livestock and protecting livestock. We call them polar bears at my house because they're just so fluffy, and we got nine of them running around that look like little oh polar bears. Oh my! Look at say this hi. little man. Hey Moses, how you doing, buddy? Hi. So now here's the thing. They're protection animals for the, the goats or the sheep or whatever. Different people have different purposes. Some people like donkeys, some people mm -hmm. like dogs, some people like llamas or alpacas, but at our house we prefer the dogs. So he is not going to get too much attention like a normal mm -hmm. dog. So he's going to mainly bond with the sheep. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's go take him out. Okay. Hey girls. Hey girls. Come here girls. Hey girls. How's that girl? Looky here. Look at that baby. Look at that baby. See the baby? That's just a baby. That's just a baby. And this is how it starts. You know, they got to get used to it. It's going to take some bonding and some time. We, we go from uh, Sunday to Tuesday. But once they figured out a couple days later that he's here to not hurt them, well, it's turned out really well, and we're trying to be his hands off as much as we can, and he's really keen on them. He wants to be around them, and if we come up unexpected, you gotta hear him bark. Just a tiny little puppy bark. One day we'll sound like a big vicious bark. He's not cute or anything, and the girls are happy with him now. Everybody's buddies and pals, and every now and then we accidentally reach down and pet him on the head. We don't mean to, but we just can't hardly resist, can we, Motors? You gotta be, you gotta be a mean guard dog, and we can't pet you too much because you're vicious and hateful and you're going to take everybody very seriously no bad coyotes are going to get in here this is milkweed who is very personable she likes to have her head scratched this is mavis who's the leader that's myrtle who's the stomper and uh, these are our girls they are going to be um, our brood stock they're probably going to die of old age and be very happy on the farm here and moses he's the protector over there by Nikki's feet. And then see how Maggie came into his life. You ready? 
I am ready. I'm excited. All right. Let's turn it in your watch. Here we go, live as it happens. We're about to meet our little baby Maggie. Watch what she want now. Magnolia. Is that the mama? Boy, our dog Moses. <laughs> Look at that baby. Look at that baby. <laughs> what about you, girl? Oh my! Look at that. Look at that baby. What a fatty. She's eating oh good. My. Seven days. What about you doing? You the only girl? You the only girl? No panda bear. The only girl. Oh my goodness. She's sweet. <laughs> All right, here we are. This is not uh, set up, this is real time. Moses is about to meet Magnolia here. Who's that? Who's that? Okay, let's go over this way. Let's go up here on the hill in the sunshine. Who's that? Here we go. Who's that? Who's Ooh, that? Nice. Set her down, set her down. See the baby? Look at the baby. Look at the baby. Yeah, that's a baby. Yeah, look at the baby. What about, the, yeah. like, what is this? Nice. Just let them be and see what they do. Nice. See the baby? Okay. See the baby? What's about that baby She's girl? Happy. You got a buddy. Aw, <laughs> oh, is she nice? Well, the good thing is, is that Magnolia was raised with all kinds of critters, burrows and Look, look at her stomping like a deer. He's kind of protective of her. Did you see that? I hope he is. So let's just stand back and see what they do. Then we snuck out behind the trees to watch to make sure nobody was going to get too rough and it looked like things were going to be just fine. And they met and they fell and in they love met, instantly. They <laughs> fell in love. We had a ceremony up on the hill yes, up here we did. under the stars Aww. and they absolutely fell in love and were blessed with these little puppies. They are the most loving, yes, sweet animals in the world. All right, we have some prosciutto here. Now, as you can see, there's no fat on this. That looks good. Now, I'm gonna take equal parts pepper, salt, garlic. Let's just go ahead and wrap this. Okay, Nikki, I've got some hot oil in here, olive oil. You wanna go ahead and sit that in there? Ooh. Ooh, I love this stuff. Yeah. We're gonna take a little bit of garlic. For flavor, spread that around in there. Just a little sprig of rosemary here. Nikki and I like ours very rare. Now the what's up with that? I can't remember this. I like it. I like it. Sure. You still like it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm I'm up past the fuzzy point now. Now look at that. Wow. Look at that. The great thing about cooking once you start 
You're gonna start to find out more and more things about, ooh, if I had this, it would taste good. Yum. Then you find this spice and that spice and this herb and that herb. Look at that. That looks good. Now put a little more salt, pepper, and garlic on the outside of that. Now we're gonna we're gonna keep some of the drippings here for our reduction. Ooh. And we haven't got it in there real hot. We don't want to, you know, burn it up. And that gives that a little bit of fat, a little bit of flavor on the outside of that. Now, if you have trouble finding prosciutto, you can very easily use your very thin bacon. Works just Here. as well. Look wow. at that. Wow. <laughs> How many people have we converted? Right. Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> Behind the camera. If you're here talking about Kelly, Kelly's our daughter. She went to school to learn all about the right. homology. Wow. wow. She's doing a wonderful job. She's got a degree in what she does, and we're so happy to have her. Remember, she hated it, would not eat deer. She would not eat yeah. it when she was a starving college student. That's right. She came down one time and I did I fix her a burger or a steak? I think you did, a steak. Next thing you know, of course, I had her tell her. I said, I got you. And she's like, um, well, do you have any more of that in the freezer? <laughs> well, yeah. Let me say, you know, she's packing it out. you got to watch her now. She gets in the freezer yeah, on the way out the door. Right. Uh -huh. All right. That looks amazing. What do you think? That looks amazing. Now, the important wow. thing about most meats are they need to rest. Okay. All right. We put our drippings in there. We're going to take a okay. cup and a half of chicken stock. Anytime mm. you cook chicken, save your stock. Now, if you're looking for port wine, a lot of times different stores will have their wine labeled differently and they may have it under cooking wine. But understand that you want to buy a bottle that you would actually drink. So the one, I have a great mm. complex taste, it's sweet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two cups of this. With that, add a quarter of a cup of balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna take one teaspoon of salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm gonna take one teaspoon of dried thyme and a half a teaspoon of ground allspice, all right, and a dash of cinnamon. You know the Greeks, <laughs> And at the French use cinnamon. My grandpa used it, everything. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here. And if you will, cut those shallots up, a shallot and a half. I wanna bring this to a hard boil. This is one of my favorite snacks in the world. These are pitted. I'm gonna take probably 15 of these, 12 to 15 of these. All right, I'm gonna take just a little bit more of my port and put in here. So hopefully it'll mix up a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and scoop this out. Now this is not the only time that's gonna go through that processor. All right, go ahead and drop your shallots in there, if you will. All these? Not all of them. A little bit more. That'll do it. All right, now what we're gonna do. Mm. Didn't it smell good? Wow. Oh my. It's good. The red wine sauce that Raul Dupree taught me. Here's a picture of old Raul, one of the most intriguing human beings. I can't imagine the world without Raoul. And I tried to talk him into doing a cookbook. He says, all, all the French all the French have a cookbook. He said, I got it right here. And he pointed to you know, right here. I said, yeah, but nobody else does Raoul. Couldn't talk him into doing it. I wish I had to sit down with him for days, hours, weeks. And he was wonderful with his sauces. And you know, it's not that complicated. If you just kind of pay right. attention to what you're doing, you're reducing this down. It smells good. Mm -hmm. mm. Should I taste it? Not no? yet. Okay. It's illegal. Uh oh. All Most right. countries they'll take you off and put you on an island. Really? What well, island? Really warm. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hey, do that. Send me to an island. I like that. Thoughts? Yeah, I like that. All right, what we're gonna do is reduce this down by about half. I mean, we poured a bunch of stuff in there. We're not gonna end up with that much because what we're, what's gonna happen here is we're gonna take this after it reduces down, and we're gonna pour it in here and let it cool down just a hair. Then we're gonna put it back. It might take two scoops to put okay. it in there back in there, and then after that, we're gonna run it through cheesecloth. Okay. So we end up with just the sauce itself. All these wonderful flavors are gonna to come together. Okay, now we're gonna pour our sauce back in. Oh, now remember wow. we talked about reduction? Start off with a cup and a half of broth, right. two cups of wine, 
all those other ingredients and look where we are. That's a reduction. That looks good. Tell us what you're doing with your wonderful potatoes. Smash My potatoes. easy potatoes. Smash potatoes. And all I've done is I like red skins, you know that, because I like the skins on. And I've just boiled these. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take a whole stick of butter. Is that bad? That's that uh, the kind of butter that... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter butter. Yeah, right. All right. That's what makes these so good. And I'm going to smash that in first. I don't want to do it with a mixer because I don't. I want it a little bit chunky. Mm -hmm. Now I like to put sour cream in there. So I have about five potatoes there. So let's do about let's do a couple big scoops of sour cream. How's that sound? Mm-hmm. See, I'll, and I kind of go by how it looks every time. All right, and just a little bit. Let's put just a little bit of whipping cream in here, just to give it a little more. Goo. Calorie free potatoes. Mm-hmm. And now here's the, what I like to add: this basil. We grew grow it on our porch in the summer, and it's in the atrium. So I thought let's throw some basil in there, and give it some flavor. Would you look at that piece of venison over here, Nikki? That looks good. Look I, that. I cannot wait to eat that. Now, would you rather have that or a burger? That right now, that. Now, sometimes you got to have a burger. That's right. You know, it's, every now and then we hearken back to things we've done before. If you've got venison burger and a lot of it, and want to do something with it a little different, my dad's Delicious. world famous cheeseburgers. Take a look at that. That's a good those. time to talk about. Go into timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Check out recipes you might not have seen before. I'm just throwing some basil in here. You see that? This is my smashed potatoes. What did you use, eight or ten leaves? Sam? Probably, yeah. And is it what you like? Sometimes I only use a couple. You cannot believe the flavor. I love it. That that adds. It is, I can't even explain it. You're just going to have to try it. Mmm, yum. I'm ready. Mm, let's reduce a little bit more. Mm. Oh, wow. All right, you're talking about a reduction. Look at that. That's now, see how thick perfect. that is? Now, if we had to measure that, that would probably be less than a quarter of a cup. Wow. At the end, I'm doing this because nobody said I couldn't. Just, to, good. just to give that little last taste that stays on there. Now, here's our reduction, which we're going to take. And I know what you're going to say once I get started here. Mm -hmm. What else are you going to say? You want some on your potatoes, don't you? I do, a little bit. I know you did. A little bit on the potatoes would be good. Even though potatoes almost don't need anything, but they would be delicious. Now that's too pretty to eat. Look at that. Too pretty. I know. It's I almost good. feel guilty eating it. <laughs> do you want me to cut any of that for you? Or you like to eat the whole piece, don't I'm you? I'm telling you what. Go ahead and slice them in half. That's about enough to eat. Mmm. That's wow. amazing. And those potatoes? The, the sauce makes it. What do you think? I think I'm in love. Aren't those good? Yeah, did yourself again. What do you think? That was good. We're going to eat like cro magnons Then we're going to go eat puppies. Yay! Because they need a name. Yes, they do. We've come to that time. <laughs> Look at these. Well, look who's out here. Uh, how can you away? even think about anything when you got two big fat puppies here? Look how fat. Look how cute they are. That's a little boy. That's a little boy. Now, it's funny, is they're, they're like the spitting image, but the they're opposite. in opposite. Oh, there's a little, oh she's yeah. going to cry. Oh, she don't like that. They haven't been out of the chicken coop. Yes. It has been turned into a, a whelping barn, I guess you could call it. But uh, we had so much response. It's unbelievable. Miss Kitty, Mr. Dillon, Laurie Stout Barnett said... Then Molly, Marcus, and Marty said Denise Hartman straight. Sue Smith said Maddie and Micah. We went through millions of this. It seems like, well, there weren't millions, but there were a lot. Da, 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 da. This is, the little man is major for his whole existence here on the farm. And the little whiny one, Billy. Now, this is, oh, ooh, that's a bark. Look at that. He's upset. How about that? He's going to be a good barker. He's a good baby. Look at her. He's like, where's my sister? Where's my sister? There she is. There, there she is. is. There, there she is. There, there she is. Oh. <laughs> the first ones to post the names Major and Millie were Denise Hartman Straight and Pat Nipper. Congratulations. Now, in order to receive your gift, simply private message us. Now, we looked at it a little bit further in Georgie Smith Shoemate. It was later and after the fact, but she came up with both the names, Millie and Major. So now, you know what else, though? Right. Your sister called the other night, and she said, with Major. Major, and yeah. my mom called with Millie, so yeah. it had to be. So this is perfect. Thank you again, everybody, for helping us out. Look how huge they are. You know what? Are. They're not even three weeks old. So this is super duper big, I think. You know, we lost one. 
And that yeah. was sad. But yeah. you know who's getting all the benefits of all her milk right now? Yes, both of these. These two guys. Look how thick girls. their hair is. <laughs> you know what? Thank you again so much for watching Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. And you know what? Don't forget to go to our Facebook page and like it. See where we're going, what we're doing. Also, TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com for things you might have missed, some shows you might not have seen, and some recipes, of course. And until next week, it's all about... Good times. Good friends. And good puppies. And good eats. <laughs> good eats. <laughs> See you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. They are precious. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original gusset jean, careful craftsmanship, continual improvement. Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987. So Jill, I know the markets have taken a hit lately. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to touch base. How did Edward Jones come to manage over $800 billion in assets? Here's our latest market outlook, and there are two things that I'd like to point out. So that's interesting. You know, we had spoken about that before. Through FaceTime, when you really need it. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing.